Hello! Welcome back to class and to our read aloud. Back to the twits. Today I am going to read two chunks. We somehow got behind our in-person class. So we have a nice long read aloud today. So the last thing that happened, I think this picture will remind you, the boys that were stuck in the tree to the sticky glue decided, well, it's just our pants that are stuck. So they hopped out of their pants and ran away. Our next chapter is called The Great Upside Down Monkey Circus. Okay, here we go. Now for the monkeys. The four monkeys in the cage in the garden were all one family. They were Muggle Wump and his wife and their two small children. But what on earth were Mr. and Mrs. Twit doing with monkeys in their garden? Well, in the old days, when they both worked in the circus as monkey trainers, they used to teach monkeys to do tricks and to dress up in human clothes and to smoke pipes and all the rest of that nonsense. Now, this book was written a long time ago in England. And back in those time periods, a lot of old men smoked a pipe. Um, so that is what they're talking about. Today, although they were retired, Mr. Twit still wanted to train monkeys. It was his dream that one day he would own his very own great upside down monkey circus in the world. That meant that the monkeys had to do everything upside down. They had to dance upside down, on their hands with their feet in the air. They had to play football upside down. They had to balance one on top of the other upside down, with Mugglewump at the bottom and the smallest baby monkey at the very top. They even had to eat and drink upside down, and that is not an easy thing to do, because the food and water has to go up your throat instead of down it. In fact, it is almost impossible but the monkeys simply had to do it, otherwise they got nothing. All this sounds pretty silly to you and me. It sounded pretty silly to the monkeys too. They absolutely hated having to do this upside down nonsense day after day. It made them giddy standing on their heads for hours on end. Sometimes the two small monkey children would faint with so much blood going to their heads. But Mr. Twit didn't care about that. He kept them practicing for six hours every day, and if they didn't do as they were told, Mrs. Twit would soon come running with her beastly stick. Right. Let me check that picture out. Yikes. This next part is called the Roly Poly Bird to the Rescue. Mugglewump and his family longed to escape from the cage in Mr. Twit's garden and go back to the African jungle where they came from. They hated Mr. and Mrs. Twit for making their lives so miserable. They also hated them for what they did to the birds every Tuesday and Wednesday. Fly away, birds, they used to shout, jumping about in the cage and waving their arms. Don't sit on that big dead tree. It's just been smeared all over with sticky glue. Go sit somewhere else. But these were English birds, and they couldn't understand the weird African language the monkeys spoke. So they took no notice and went on using the big dead tree and getting caught for Mrs. Twit's bird pie. All right, here's the monkeys trying to warn the birds. No, go away. But they don't speak the same language. Then one day, a truly magnificent bird flew down out of the sky and landed on the monkey cage. Good heavens, cried all the monkeys together. It's the roly-poly bird. What on earth are you doing over here in England, roly-poly bird? Like the monkeys, the roly-poly bird came from Africa, and he spoke the same language as they did. I've come for a holiday, said the roly-poly bird. I like to travel. Now, same as um, other things in this book that are, the language is old. A holiday means a vacation. So if you live in Europe and they want to go on a vacation, you call that a holiday. So basically, our roly-poly bird's on vacation. I like to travel. He fluffed his marvelous colored feathers and looked down rather grandly at the monkeys. For most people, he went on, flying away on holiday is very expensive, but I can fly anywhere in the world for nothing. Well, do you know how to talk to these English birds? Mugglewump asked him. Of course I do, said the roly-poly bird. It's no good going to a country and not knowing the language. Then we must hurry, said Mugglewump. Today is Tuesday, and over there you can already see the revolting Mr. Twit up the ladder, painting sticky glue on all the branches of the big dead tree. This evening, when the birds come in to roost, you must warn them not to perch on that tree, or they will be made into bird pie. That evening, the roly-poly bird flew around and around the big dead tree, singing out, 
There's sticky stuff all over the tree. If you land in the branches, you'll never get free. So fly away, fly away, stay up high, or you'll finish up tomorrow in a hot bird pie. So here is our roly-poly bird talking with the monkeys. And he does have very beautiful feathers. The next chapter is called No Bird Pie for Mr. Twit. The next morning, when Mr. Twit came out with his huge basket to snatch all the birds from the big dead tree, there wasn't a single one on it. They were all sitting on top of the monkey cage. The roly-poly bird was there as well, and Muggle Womp and his family were inside the cage, and the whole lot of them were laughing at Mr. Twit. Now think a minute, how do you think that made Mr. Twit feel? Yeah, if, I, if you're like me, he's probably not very happy, right? We know he likes his bird pie. All right, so here they all are, laughing at Mr. Twit. Next chapter. And here is our picture to begin. You can maybe make a prediction what he's doing on the monkey cage. But this chapter is called Still No Bird Pie for Mr. Twit. Mr. Twit wasn't going to wait another week for his bird pie supper. He loved bird pie. It was his favorite meal. So that very same day, he went after the birds again. This time, he smeared all the top bars of the monkey cage with sticky glue, as well as the branches of the big dead tree. Now I'll get you, he said, whichever one you sit on. The monkeys crouched inside the cage, watching all this, and later on, when the roly-poly bird came swooping in for an evening chat, they shouted out, Don't land on our cage, roly-poly bird. It's covered with sticky glue. So is the tree. And that evening, as the sun went down and all the birds came in again to roost, the roly-poly bird flew around and around the monkey cage and the big dead tree, singing out his warning. There's sticky stuff now on the cage and the tree. If you land on either, you'll never get free. So fly away, fly away, stay up high, or you'll finish up tomorrow in a hot bird pie. And our next chapter is called Mr. and Mrs. Twit Go Off to Buy Guns. Why do you think they are going to have to do that? Make a prediction. All right, here we go. The next morning... When Mr. Twit came out with his huge basket, not a single bird was sitting on either the monkey cage or the big dead tree. They were all perched happily on the roof of Mr. Twit's house. The roly-poly bird was up there as well, and the monkeys were in the cage, and the whole lot of them were hooting with laughter at Mr. Twit. So check that page out. You think he feels foolish? He probably does. I'll wipe that silly laugh off your beaks, Mr. Twit screamed at the birds. I'll get you next time, you filthy, feathery frumps. I'll wring your necks, the whole lot of you, and have you bubbling in the pot of bird pie before this day is out. How are you going to do that? asked Mrs. Twit, who had come outside to see what all the noise was about. I won't have you smearing sticky glue all over the roof of our house. Mr. Twit went very close to Mrs. Twit and lowered his voice so that neither the birds nor the monkeys should hear. I've got a great idea, he said. I lost my spot. I've got a great idea, he said. We'll both go into town right away, and we'll buy a gun each. How's that? Brilliant, cried Mrs. Twit, grinning and showing her long yellow teeth. We'll buy those big shotguns that spray out 50 bullets or more with each bang. Exactly, said Mr. Twit. Lock up the house while I go and make sure the monkeys are safely shut away. Mr. Twit went over to the monkey cage. Attention, he barked in his fearsome monkey trainer's voice. Upside down, all of you, and jump to it. One on top of the other. Quick, get on with it or you'll feel Mrs. Twit's stick across your backsides. Obediently, the poor monkeys stood on their hands and clambered one on top of the other, with Mugglewump at the bottom and the smallest child at the very top. Now, stay there till we've come back, Mr. Twit ordered. Don't you dare move, and don't overbalance. When we return in over two or three hours' time, I shall expect to find you all in exactly the same position as you are now. You understand? With that, Mr. Twit marched away. Mrs. Twit went with him. 
and the monkeys were left alone with the birds. Okay, now if you're one of these birds or one of these monkeys, what do you think they want to do to Mr. and Mrs. Twit? If you're thinking like me, they might want some revenge, or at least they want to get away. Let's see what happens. Our next chapter is called Mugglewump Has an Idea. As soon as Mr. and Mrs. Twit had disappeared down the road, the monkeys all flipped back onto their feet the right way up. Quick, get the key, Mugglewump called out to the roly-poly bird, who was still sitting on the roof of the house. What key? shouted the roly-poly bird. The key to the door of our cage, cried Mugglewump. It's hanging on a nail in the work shed. That's where he always puts it. The roly-poly bird flew down and came back with the key in his beak. Mugglewump reached a hand through the bars of the cage and took the key. He put it in the lock and turned it. The door opened. All four monkeys leapt out together. We are free, cried the two little ones. Where shall we go, Dad? Where shall we hide? Don't get excited, said Mugglewump. Calm down, everybody. Before we escape from this beastly place, we have one very, very important thing to do. What, they asked him. We are going to turn those terrible twits upside down. We're going to what, they cried. You must be joking, Dad. I'm not joking, Mugglewump said. We are going to turn both Mr. and Mrs. Twit upside down with their legs in the air. Don't be ridiculous, the roly-poly bird said. How can we possibly turn those two maggoty old monsters upside down? Before I turn the page, here's our picture of the roly-poly bird getting the key for the monkeys. We can, we can, cried Mugglewump. We are going to make them stand on their heads for hours and hours, perhaps forever. Let them see what it feels like for a change. How, said the roly-poly bird. Just tell me how. Mugglewump laid his head on one side, and a tiny, twinkling little smile touched the corners of his mouth. Now and again, he said, but not very often, I have a brilliant idea. This is one of them. Follow me, my friends, follow me. He scampered off toward the house, and the three other monkeys and the roly-poly bird went after him. Buckets and paintbrushes, cried Mugglewump. That's what we want next. There are plenty in the workshed. Hurry up, everyone. Get a bucket and a paintbrush. Inside Mr. Twit's work, work shed, there was an enormous barrel of hug-tight sticky glue, the stuff he used for catching birds. Fill your buckets, Mugglewump ordered. We are now going into the big house. Mrs. Twit had hidden the key to the front door under the mat, and Mugglewump had seen her doing it. So it was easy for them to get in. In they went, all four monkeys with their buckets of sticky glue. Then came the roly-poly bird flying in after them with a bucket in his beak and a brush in his claw. And here are our pictures. So first they're filling up their buckets with the sticky glue. And now they're heading into the house with buckets of sticky glue and a paintbrush. All right, we know Mugglewump wants to put the twits on their head. Think about how is he going to do this? We know they've got sticky glue, buckets, paint, and they're in the house. So that is all for today. But I will leave you wondering and thinking about what might happen next. And I will tell you that the title of our next chapter is called The Great Glue Painting Begins, if that gives you a clue. All right. Thank you for reading with me today. I will see you all again tomorrow.